And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for April 2024. I'm Jason Parent with the Rooster County Action Program. On this month's edition of ACAP Today, we're going to speak with early care and education professionals here with the Aroostook County Action Program about what's happening with childcare. We've been hearing a lot about it in the media lately about the childcare crisis, not only here in Aroostook County, but elsewhere across the country. We're going to talk about some of the initiatives that are happening right here in the county to help deal with that crisis and also to help prepare early care and education professionals for their future career. We're going to get to that in just a bit, but before we get to our feature interview this month, we're going to first get to the news and information that you can use again for this the week of or the month of April 2024. And we begin with our news and information that you can use with this. Our first story is about uh, a Save the Date conference for an Aroostook Early Childhood Education Conference. We're going to be talking again about this conference and other things in our interview segment, but it's happening on June 1st, so just a couple of months away, and it will be happening at the Northern Maine Community College uh, from 8.30 to 3 o'clock that day, and it's going to be specifically to help early care and education professionals deal with challenging behaviors that they're experiencing in the classroom and in early childhood education settings. So we certainly encourage anyone who uh, works with young children to save the date for this conference and we'll have more information on in next month's edition of ACAT Today. Well, the Hannaford Grocery Store in Caribou has bestowed on ACAP an honor in the month of April. We are going to be there blooming for a good bouquet, a dollar donation for every bouquet uh, sold, uh, the blooming for good bouquet that is sold that month. Uh, you can go to Hannaford in Caribou and purchase the bouquet. Uh, and again, a dollar from the proceeds of that Blooming for Good bouquet. That one that's pictured below or a similar one to it, we'll get a $1 donation here at INCAP. So thank you to our friends at Hannaford for that designation in the month of April. We move on now to an infant safe sleep and period of purple crying for parents and caregivers workshop that's being hosted by our friends and partners at the Aroostook Council for Healthy Families. Uh, there are a couple of happening. The first is happening on Thursday, May 9th from 10 a.m. to noon, and that one's happening remotely on Zoom, so you can attend it from anywhere. Um, you can register on that by calling uh, the uh, Arista Council for Healthy Families at 538-207-538-5674, or you can register online at info at achf-me.org. Again, that one is on Zoom on Thursday, May 9th. Then on Saturday, May 18th, they're going to hold an in-person version of this infant safe sleep and period of purple crying for parents and caregivers workshop in person at MSAD1 at their adult education office at 71 Blake Street uh, in Presque Isle, co-located in the Presque Isle High School campus. Again, you can use the same information to register for that workshop if that date and the in-person format works better for you. So either way, the registration information, the site to register is the same, and we encourage any parents of young children uh, who want to know about how to best lay their child down and keep their baby safe when they're sleeping at night to attend this conference conference either remotely or in Presque Isle in person. The WIC program, speaking of uh, uh, young children, the WIC program is available to all Aroostook County households who are income eligible and the income eligibility guidelines are right there on your screen. You can see them by household size. Often folks think that they're not eligible for this program because they're not eligible for other programs, but the income eligibility guidelines for this program are greater than most of the programs that we do uh, operate here at ACAP. We certainly encourage folks to check this out. This is for all pregnant women, so you don't have to actually have had the child yet. And, who, and those who have children under the age of five, uh, you certainly are eligible if you receive a SNAP or main care uh, benefit, you're certainly automatically eligible, but other households are eligible as well, as you can see from the income guidelines there. Now, the benefits of WIC include extra food for breastfeeding moms, free electric breast pump loans, uh, nutrition and breastfeeding education, infant formula, three months of grocery store benefits that are, are given at a time, and those are now given on a card and farmer's market benefits during the summer months, the very popular uh, summer's uh, food, uh, farmer's markets that are done in the summer. Now, uh, there is a list of approved foods, uh, WIC approved foods right there um, on the screen. And in addition to that, we do do clinics closer to you in Caribou, Fort Kent, Holton, Madawaska, Presque Isle, and Van Buren. So do call us here at ACAP at 764-3721 for more information on this very worthwhile program for 
expectant moms and parents with very young children under the age of five. Another program that we're offering for expectant moms or those who think they might be expecting or interested in having a child in the coming months or years is the uh, Vitamin Angels program, which offers free prenatal vitamins to women of childbearing age. You can contact us at 207-764-3721 or email us at info at acap-me.org for more information. Or if you're participating in the WIC program, certainly ask about those uh, when you're connecting with the WIC program. Again, that's the free Vitamin Angels program that we're partnering with Vitamin Angels to offer women of childbearing age in Aroostook County access to free prenatal vitamins. Up next, uh, our prevention team, which is uh, offering resources for those interested in quitting tobacco. We have a variety of resources that we can connect you with, our prevention team in particular. Those resources in quit include the main quit link, My Life, My Quit, and also our ACAP community educators who are available to help you connect with other individuals and quitting resources. You can contact us at 764-3721 or email prevention at acap-me.org to see how we can help with those particular resources to help you quit tobacco products. Maine's collaborative workforce, including ACAP, continue to offer a series of workshops that are all offered remotely via Zoom that include valuable lessons like um, interviewing tips and tricks, making career choices, resume cover letter development, job preparation and retention, and navigation to job search and hiring process for individuals with a criminal history. Uh, we certainly encourage you to take advantage of these if you're looking to um, navigate the workforce or improve your workforce, uh, your work ability your higher ability, I should say, uh, please do consider contacting us about those. You can find the link on the ACAP website to register for these remote workshops. We are also uh, reaching out there to the community members, inter individuals interested in, in becoming early childhood educators with ACAP. There are new state stipends available that add to your salary of up to $625, depending on your educational attainment and the position that you achieve with the agency. We encourage you to call us about this if you're interested in uh, occupying positions such as a teacher with an associate degree, a teacher with a bachelor degree, ed techs two and three and teacher aid positions are all available within the agency. Uh, contact us 764-3721 extension 188 or you can email us at info at acap-me.org. You can also visit our website at acap-me.org slash join our team to learn about the employment offers and the incentives in early childhood education that are happening now. And lastly, if we have not talked about something in this edition of ACAP Today, in this April 2024 edition of ACAP Today, and you are in need of assistance but aren't quite sure where to reach out or what programs might be available, we do have navigators available to work with you on that. You can give us a call here at 764-3721. We can help you connect with things like employment, housing, applying for benefits, food and wellness, connecting to other resources, and of course, early care and education, which we're going to talk about in just a minute in our feature interview this month. But for now, that's it for this week's news and information you can use. And as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we're joined by three ACAP early care and education professionals to talk about what's happening here in Aroostook County and what's to come as it relates to uh, issues and concern matters related to child care and early childhood education. I'm so pleased to welcome to the program uh, three program coordinators here at ACAP that work in our early care and education area, Karen Page, Amy Murchison, and Katie McQuaid. Welcome all. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, all Jason. Right. All right, so let's start right in on our conversation. There's been a lot of things happening uh, with early care and education across Aroostook County and a lot of conversation. Maybe start and get a, a level set for where things stand right now here at ACAP and how things are going um, in the early care and education environment. So I'll let, let any one of you who wants to start and pick that topic up, uh, go for it. Thank you, Jason. Um, I'll start with we as as many people already know, early care and education is very busy. Um, lots of families need early care so that they can go to work or go to school. So we continuously have open enrollment for our Early Head Start program uh, for families who are at 100% or below poverty or are receiving SNAP, TANF, 
who may be experiencing homelessness or a child in foster care. And we are starting to recruit for our fall sessions of Head Start, very similar um, eligibility categories. Um, our application is available on our early care and education portion of the ACAP website. Um, so we certainly want to be actively um, recruiting children and families for our program. Um, the great thing is, is um, parents apply and they can, their child gets enrolled and then they're linked with other services across ACAP. So it's a really comprehensive approach to serving families. Um, we also have um, childcare classrooms. Those are full and they stay full. We really encourage families who are looking for childcare to again, fill out our application on our early care and education portion of the ACAP website um, to get on the wait list. We do have some heavier wait lists, especially um, Caribou and Presque Isle for infant toddler age children. So really encourage families if you're looking for childcare to fill out that application, get on our wait list. Um, we do have openings here or there. So um, it, it it's really helpful to do that now. Now, uh, Katie McQuaid, Amy spoke a lot about the different programs and services that we offer. Maybe if we could help people sort of understand, we, we talk about Head Start. A lot of people know Head Start as, as one of the legacy programs, but Head Start includes that early Head Start component. So maybe, uh, maybe we could start by explaining to folks what is the difference between the early Head Start and the more traditional Head Start program that a lot of folks are much more aware of and think about. So um, early Head Start is focused on infants and toddlers. So um, you have a smaller classroom size and um, more adults per group of children. So early Head Start is looking at children um, six weeks to three years of age. And uh, our Head Start programs are looking at preschool um, age children, three to five. Um, so one great thing about starting an early Head Start is um, they have the opportunity to get into the program. And if they continue to be eligible, um, they can transition right into one of our preschool Head Start classrooms. Um, the other benefits um, of getting in, whether it's early Head Start or, or um, Head Start is that we partner with Child Development Services. So children that may have an IEP or an individual education plan or have a disability. We work very closely with child development services to get those kids, um, whatever their IEP requires. So for some kids, it may be uh, speech therapy, occupational therapy. Um, some kids are, are working directly with an adult in the classroom on specific skills. We have kids who receive behavioral supports um, in our, our different classrooms that we have to support kids with disabilities. So um, we offer a lot of different types of services to these age groups, and um, we want to get kids off on the right foot so that when they get ready to go to school, um, they have the best um, start that they can get. Now, Karen Page, how do folks get started with an application? Like if they're hearing what Amy and, and Katie are talking about and really think, gosh, my child could really benefit from those services, what's the best way for folks to get started? Uh, like Amy mentioned, you can go right to our website, acap-me.org, um, and there is a section that says Early Care and Education. Our application's right on that website. Um, if you are unable to access the website, you can stop in at any of our locations, and we do have paper copies. Um, there's always somebody there to help you fill it out if you need support around that. Um, we would ask for um, income eligibility. So it's best if you have that prepared. Um, if not, you can always drop it off at any time. Now, Amy, we're going to talk with Karen a little bit about first for me in, in just a bit, but I want to, you know, get a better grounding on a lot of a really a great activity has been happening, a lot of good conversations in the community around early care and education. We've done some work uh, to sort of help meet the needs as some child care providers um, have, have stopped operating and the need has been there. Talk about some of the updates that you might have uh, or anybody in the group here might have about things that are are in the works right now or, or have been happening, like for example, the after school care uh, partnership program with RSU 39, give us sort of an update on where things stand with some of these newer activities that we're engaged in. Sure, 
sure, Jason. So the Caribou After School Program is full right now with the staffing that we have. And uh, Karen, is there anything you'd like to add to that? It's been going now since, I don't remember, December? October. Roughly. Okay. Yeah. It's been running really smoothly. Um, we've had a lot of support from the RSU 39 staff and um, they, it's been a very smooth transition for both children and families. Uh, the program is running really well and we look forward to everything that's coming with it um, for the future. Now, I know um, Megan Barnes, uh, who's the director of our early care and education programs and prevention and wellness programs as well here at ACAP, has been involved with a group of uh, leaders in central Aroostook County talking about the child care crisis. Any uh, any and nuggets or updates on, on some of the activity happening there or some of the conversation that any of you have been involved in? I think the one thing that has been happening, especially as we talk with community partners, um, private business owners is that how much lack of childcare impacts our workforce and um, the, the qualified staff that are available that are able to, you know, pass background checks, have be on a professional development plan and have, whether it's an associate's or bachelor's degree in early care and education, that those things also impact our ability to provide child care, um, you know, the staffing, finding staff who are um, eligible and can meet those criteria is, is also a barrier. And I think that's something that a lot of people may not realize is the very strict rules around background checks, but also, you know, we really support staff in ongoing education and professional development. So I think that's been a really important piece is that bigger understanding or that bigger picture of how childcare impacts our communities. Now, Katie, when, when I started the, the news part of the broadcast today, I let everyone know about an upcoming Aroostook Early Childhood Conference that's happening um, on Saturday, June 1st. Tell us uh, about that event, what the goal is of that event. I know that we're, we're attending, we're partnering with the organizers of that event. Uh, and really also, I, I know that you work a lot with the curriculum in our programs and a lot of the challenging social and emotional challenges that we face sort of coming out of the pandemic and experiencing with children. And I think a part of that conference is sort of meant to address that. And I know that you are also working with our teachers um, across Aroostook County to, to look at some of, of those challenging areas that are, 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 are causing them some difficulty in the classroom. Yeah, so... Um, through Main Roads to Quality, we've worked with Teresa Fisk, who is assigned to our area, and um, along with her, we have a couple of community of practice child care providers, um, and then just um, early childhood specialists that we've brought together. Um, there's also um, NMCC is at that table, so the the purpose of us coming together was to provide an opportunity locally for people to access professional development um yearly uh the state has an early childhood conference however it's in bangor this year it's in portland um which can be a challenge for people up here to get the time off because many of the child care providers have to close their doors there's not you know, someone to take their place. So that's hard for families. So this conference that we've been working on is local. Um, it's gonna be at the Northern Maine Community College. Um, and the topics, as you can see um, from the flyer, are really focused on challenging behaviors and trauma-informed um, practices and care. So we have a pre presenter who's going to talk about that. And we also are going to have um, people share strategies around dealing with challenging behaviors in the different types of settings that um, early childhood providers have. And I know that certainly that has become uh, even more of a concern. It was a concern uh, prior to the pandemic, but we sort of sort of have that marker, if you will, of the pandemic and and where you know children were were not in class, not in session, not having those opportunities to socialize with other children. And and so I think 
uh, it's fair to say that you have seen, I know that other early childhood education professionals have as well, sort of a change and in, in an increase in maybe some of those challenging behaviors in that time period. Yes, um, it, I don't think there's any um, provider or um, school even that is untouched by um, children who have higher needs at this point. And so um, internally, we've looked at how we can support staff because we do have um, newer staff who maybe don't have as much experience dealing with um, children who are struggling uh, socially and emotionally in the classroom. So we've provided um, trainings internally around pyramid model practices, which again is to help prevent children from having challenging behaviors through the things that we as adults can control. Um, so we've we've focused a lot of internal professional development around that to help support staff because it's hard if, if a child is struggling and the, the staff does not know, you know, necessarily how to meet that need that that child's expressing. So we recognize that and certainly that's what we've heard in our community as well. And one of the other things I think that the state of Maine legislature has supported early childhood educators with is supplemental or, or stipend payments, if you will. I think in part, uh, Katie, recognizing that it is, it's a difficult profession and has traditionally not been a high wage profession. And so can you talk a little bit about the um, uh, about that incentive uh, for folks uh, interested in getting in involved with early childhood education? Sure. So um We've been very fortunate. Um, the state has provided funding um, for providers who are who participate in the program and um, staff who have specific levels of education or certifications fall at a different level on the scale. So um, they, as the the flyer says, they can get up to six hundred twenty five dollars uh, per month in addition to their wages provided through the state. And then there's two tiers below that as well. Um, so Amy actually uh, does a lot of the back, back work for this. She and I work together to make sure that our staff, um, based on the knowledge we have, have submitted all of their education and trainings to make sure that they can get the most um, monthly stipend that they're eligible for. So it's really about um, making sure that you're registered with Main Roads to Quality, making sure you're keeping your um, trainings up to date within that system because they um, place you on a specific level based on the education and training that you have, which then correlates to whatever level you fall on. Um, and then you get whatever the stipend is that correlates with that level. And Amy, to Katie's point, that really is uh, about continuing education. It certainly doesn't stop when when early childhood educators get the degree, if they're, if they're in a degree program, uh, that continuing education uh, goes on throughout their career. Absolutely, Jason. And part of um, being a licensed child care facility is ongoing um, education throughout the year. So a minimum of 20 hours of ongoing education is required by child care licensing. So it's amazing to, as Katie talked about, the early childhood conference that's coming up in June here, right here in Aroostook County, which will allow local providers um, along with um, ACAP staff to attend and get those continuing education hours right here um, and not having to travel to Portland or Bangor um, and take time off of work and all of that. So we're very excited and it supports um, early childhood professionals in their ongoing professional development um, and the Main Roads to Quality website and their stipend. Karen Page, we talked a little bit or alluded a little bit earlier to the First For Me program, which is the program you're coordinating uh, with ACAP and, and other providers across the county. Could you give folks, again, we've talked about this before on ACAP today, but just give folks a snapshot of what the First For Me program is and give us an update about how things are going. Absolutely. Um, so like you said, I'm working with local providers in the community um, to increase their um, rising stars rating, um, work on professional development with their staff, make sure they are in compliance with licensing and um, the fire marshal st standards. Um, 
we are looking at making their centers high quality for family and children. Um, I also work closely with the families that are eligible in their um, programs and centers. It's very similar to Head Start, the eligibility requirements. Um, the child or family could have been um, working with DHHS at some point. They could be experiencing homelessness. Um, it, there is an income eligibility um, that would make them eligible. Um, and the benefits of being an eligible family is to have access to resources um, across the county and state um, and have specific um, goals set to work towards. Um, I am currently working with a new provider in Caribou, Little Learners. Um, the owner, Annie Coomer, is, is gearing up to open very soon. She has openings, um, but is filling up very quickly. We've been working on getting her furnished and meeting all of the licensing requirements to open, and it is going very well. Now, I think uh, Katie and Amy, folks out there may be surprised. That is part of the work that ACAP is doing across the Rooster County. Really, it's about partnering and helping because we recognize that there aren't enough early childhood education slots for certainly of our program. So helping other child care providers and partnering with other child care providers in new and exciting ways is really, and school departments for that matter as well. Yes, Jason, First for Me has allowed us to really be able to partner and support our community child care providers in a way that we hadn't been able to before. And that allows parents options. Um, some parents want a more family home-based childcare versus a center-based childcare. And so it really helps build capacity within our community so that um, families who need childcare can, can get it and, and, and know that they can drop their child off and, and go off to work and not feel that, you know, that feeling you get as a parent. Um, so we're very excited about that. As you mentioned as well, we have been in conversations. We currently partner with several school districts around Aroostook County and continue to have ongoing conversations with um, public schools and how we can partner in um, communities ac across Aroostook County to um, provide services to families as well. Great. All right. Well, let's do one last sort of tour around the Zoom here and see uh, what have we not talked about that you wanted to make sure folks uh, knew and understood about efforts that are happening with early care and education here at ACAP or otherwise uh, countywide that uh, we haven't talked about yet that you wanted to make sure you left with people. Katie McQuaid, let me begin with you on that. I feel like we've done a pretty comprehensive overview. Um, I think it's just a uh, great reminder to um, think about early intervention. Um, you know, sometimes it's not even that maybe your child has a disability, but just having the opportunity to interact with other children um, in a social environment um, has a lot of positive pieces to it. So as Amy said, um, one environment isn't necessarily better or worse. There are, are wonderful in-home child care providers. They're center-based it's what works well for that family and that child. Um, so there are various opportunities and there are, are certainly a lot of different ways for um, children to get a good experience in, in the early childhood um, field. Very good point. Thank you so much for sharing that, Katie. Karen Page, uh, any thoughts that we, you haven't shared yet that you'd like to add to this conversation? Uh, yes, actually, we have um, many openings for um, positions in our centers and partnerships for um, anybody looking to step into the early care and education field. Um, Amy's mentioned and Katie's mentioned we work on professional development. Um, so if it's not a field that you have a ton of experience in, um, we are we train you and we help um, help you grow in this field if that's something that they're they're interested in. Um, but we do have many openings and we would love to have more faces in early care and education. Great, and Amy Murchison, last words yours. Thank you, Jason. Um, I just really encourage 
families to apply, um, fill out our application, and um, someone will follow up with you around eligibility. As we talked at the beginning, uh, we recruit year round for early Head Start. Um, and we also have some Head Start openings in Caribou right now. So if anybody is interested that if their child is three or four, um, and also in the fall, we will have openings at our Head Start location. So please fill out an application. Um, the other thing that um, Head Start and Early Head Start um, provide is that comprehensive support. Um, so access to a coach in our centers, follow up on health and wellness activities, appointments, and really supporting families um, to meet um, their wellness needs for their child and to support parents or guardians in maybe some goals they wanna work on. So please fill out an application and somebody will follow up with you. Thank you so much, Amy Murchison, Katie McQuaid, and Karen Page for this discussion about early care and education here in Aroostook County and specifically the initiatives that ACAP is involved in that are far reaching and uh, and have certainly a lot of impact uh, with child care providers, certainly outside of just uh, our ACAP walls here uh, in Presque Isle, Holton, Fort Kent, Caribou, and other locations where we're partnering with public schools and child care providers uh, to help ensure that there are quality childhood education experiences available for children children of all ages, uh, specific, specifically, I should say, preschool students uh, here in Aroostook County. So with that, um, before we say goodbye to our three guests and before we say goodbye to all of you, we're going to bring you our highlight snapshots uh, for this, the month of April. And we go back to something that we told you about uh, last month, and that was our celebration of Pat Good Day in Aroostook County. These are some pictures uh, from the March 15th celebration observed. Our uh, classroom in Limestone was celebrating uh, Pat Good Day with Pat, who visited all of our locations that day. Uh, that's the uh, shot there on one side of the screen, and on the other side of the screen is our team that works up in Madawaska each and every day, and we thank them, but we most importantly thank Pat Good for her 46 years of con contributions to uh, making life better here in Aroostook County um, and had a great time traveling the roads of the county with Pat that day to mark her remarkable career here at ACAP and we're so glad she's going to be with us for many years to come. That's Pat Good Day uh, that was celebrated on St. Patrick's Day and here at ACAP on the 15th of March. And that's the April edition of ACAP Today. We'll be back next month in May with our special Community Action Month edition of ACAP Today. That's right, we're only coming back in a month. We're doing these once a month now. Uh, we'll have uh, ACAP's Chief Operating Officer and hopefully some national and state uh, community action officials joining us on that May edition. Until then, have a great month of April, everyone. <laughs>